Okay, um, thanks for your patience. Um, making it to the end of the day. Um, my name is Becky Wilkes and I work at UNC Chapel Hill on a global public health contract. It's a federal contract that's funded by USAID, the United States Agency for International Development. Um, and our contract's purpose is to strengthen health information systems in um, low and middle income countries. Um, so this is a project that I worked on um, where we created a tool to try to improve the quality of country master facility lists. Um, so uh, the complexity in some of these countries that are struggling with things like AIDS and malaria and tuberculosis um, is really high. And when I started working on the contract 10 years ago, a lot of countries were struggling to get their data into digital formats. Here's an example of some paper records of patients lost to follow up <coughs> for antiretroviral treatment for AIDS. Um, and getting uh, health officials in donor countries to think about the spatial aspects of their data and to understand the value of regular and precise and complete data sets um, is the challenge. Um, but in the past few years, there's been a rapid growth in the number of these spatially referenced data sets available um, in both raster and vector formats um, and a growing awareness of their value. Here's an example of some improved boundary um, accuracy that was funded by the Gates Foundation during the fight um, to eradicate polio in Nigeria. Can you make that full screen so we can see it better? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. There's lots of different types of spatial data sets. Um, I don't know why I have that. For this presentation, we're going to focus on one specific type of spatial data sets, and that's point location data that helps us understand where things such as schools and health facilities um, or other sites of interest are, so they can be linked to attributes that are known about the site. Um, so let's start with a basic assumption. Um, when you're trying to make decisions about how to treat people effectively, it's um, helpful to know where the health facilities are. Knowing where they are can help program planners have a better understanding of the demand and need and can help prospective patients know what services are available to them. So many countries are now developing these master facility um, data sets. Um, and each country's list is unique, but in general, uh, they contain data on many different aspects of facilities. Um, that can be thought of as being in two domains. The signature domain, which is information that uniquely identifies a facility, and the attribute domain, which contains other attributes for the facility. And uh, many contain metadata that have information about when and how the data was collected, and if it's a deprecated record, among other things. Um, for health-related data, data quality is particularly important. Um, without good quality data, you can end up with facilities um, located in completely wrong places. So in Africa, in particular, the prime meridian and the equator run through the continent. So when you have, you know, you're missing a negative um, data sign, you can have all kinds of problems with your coordinates. Um, and this can lead to confusion um, and mistrust of the data, which is probably worse. Uh, so we created a um, tool that looks at these two different elements of facility list, the spatial and the attribute data. So the spatial component is related to the geographic component. Um, and with thousands of sites, it's not possible to go through and manually verify the coordinates versus the attribute data. Um, so the attribute data may say that uh, a certain facility is located in a certain district, but then when you plot it on a map, it's not. Um, but a lot of these people that, we're, that need to review this data um, in other countries don't know how to use GIS. So we created this tool for them to help with the congruity between those two data elements. Um, so 
This can be a slow and meticulous process going through each point and looking to see if it's falling in the correct location. And even with a team of people, it would take a long time um, to do this. So how can we automate it? Um, what we did first was we used a uh, model builder in, Q in uh, ArcGIS, and then we took that code and um, we actually contracted out to have it written in Python for QGIS, so now it's a plugin available for QGIS, which uh, the downloads on our site have quickly, the QGIS downloads have quickly eclipsed the ArcGIS because of the licensing issues for ArcGIS, um, especially in countries with limited resources. Um, so we came up with, how much time have I used? Ten minutes, I guess. We came up with um, six different anomalies um, that may indicate a data quality issue and we've used these six things for squad and we did this we talked to somebody from the um, office of the geographer in the department of state and uh, were assessing data that they had about different countries and came up with these six different things that are often wrong with the data so the coordinate could just be missing the x value or the y value or both um, the coordinates could be truncated, so they're not precise enough. This happens a lot when people, um, when people gather their data by hand and they're writing it down on a clipboard, they will often say it's at 32 degrees, you know, west latitude and, I mean, west longitude and 84 degrees north latitude, and they'll think that's good enough. But those of you who work with GIS data realize it could be, you know, at the equator it could be... 70 miles off. Um, there's often duplicate coordinates, sometimes there's duplicate facility names, um, sometimes the site is just slightly outside of the district it's expected to be in, so that could be a problem with accuracy um, with either the site coordinates or the line, the administrative unit line, um, or it could be just way outside of where it's supposed to be, like the other side of the world. So. Um, once you find these anomalies, you can investigate the records. That's the first thing, is to try to make your workload a lot smaller. Um, so we wrote this tool to try to find the anomalies. And then we wrote um, paperwork on how you would go about fixing these. So um, I'm going to step through each anomaly to talk about what could be done to fix each one just real quickly. Uh, so the first one, there's no coordinate or a coordinate of zero, zero. Um, and to fix this, you would need to review the GPS logs or other records to see if it's located. I mean, if you have this data somewhere else, you might need to recapture the location on your next site visit of a facility, or you might be able to use satellite imagery and somebody says they know it's on this corner and you can get the coordinate that way. Um, for truncated coordinates, um, as I was saying, if it's off, you know, if you're missing uh, just a few significant digits, <coughs> it can be off by uh, a large amount. Probably if you have five digits of precision um, after, after the decimal place, that's within a meter, that should be fine for locating a health facility, but sometimes they're, they're truncated. And um, you would fix those by similar means. Um, duplicate, duplicate coordinates might not be a problem, so it's an anomaly, it's something we would flag, um, but it, there might actually be two distinct sites at one location, so there could be a hospital with a pharmacy inside it. Um, so it might not be a problem, but often it does indicate a problem. Um, when you have duplicate facility names, um, you would want to determine if there are two different sites that really do have the same name. So in this example, uh, there could be two sites in one country both called Mercy Clinic in two different locations. So that might not be an issue or it could be duplicate records. So if there's two with the that are named Mercy Clinic and two that are in the same, that have the exact same coordinates, that's probably, that's probably a problem. Um, if you are slightly outside the administrative unit, as I said, you might try comparing a more accurate admin unit boundary file with your master facility list file, or you might have to relocate the site or revisit the site. 
Um, if it's not anywhere near its expected location, it's probably either transposed XY values or a missing um, signage, um, or it could just be some other mistake. So um, I'm going to show you what you would need to use the squad tool and briefly illustrate how it works. And I also don't have a live demo. I just have some slides showing you screenshots. Um, so what you need to use the tool is you need um, a site location file that has a unique identifier for each site. Um, that has XY coordinates for each site in separate columns, one for latitude, one for longitude. You need the name of the site and you need the administrative unit the site is expected to be in, in one, in one field. And then you need a separate file that shows, you know, it's a geo file that shows the administrative unit boundaries. And actually what we, um, package with the tool was we packaged admin unit boundaries the best that we could get our hands on for I think it was like 14 different countries um, including Nigeria, Kenya, Tanzania, South Africa, some other ones. Um, so then you what you do is you load these relevant files into the tool or and the tool into ArcGIS or into QGIS um, and then you um, you add the squad tool with the, with the plugin manager when you're running it in QGIS. Um, so, and I have at the end the website you can download the tool from. You can also search for squad in the plugin dialog box in QGIS. So you open the tool, you provide these parameters. So again, this is for someone who doesn't necessarily know how to use GIS. They haven't necessarily ever used a G GIS. We provide an instruction manual, how they load everything in, and then we show them they can plug in these different parameters. Um, the tool will ask you for the right files and fields. You run the tool and then you get a new column for each of the anomalies. Um, so e records are flagged for each anomaly. And if you look at this one, you can see that um, for the first row, which is named, this is our dummy data set, so it's named cardinal, it's missing an x value, so it gets the, it gets anomaly 1. And if you go down to robin at the bottom, it has both coordinates, so it doesn't get the anomaly 1. And then it, the tool does this for each of the anomalies. So here's an example of the tool in action. Um, you can see there's a in, underneath the layers menu right here, there's something called Kenya Facilities that's loaded in, and there's another one called East Africa Admin Boundaries. Um, and then you can see here all the fields that are associated with the one that's selected, which is the Kenya Facilities file. And here's what it looks like on the map. So these are all the health facilities um, located in Kenya from their master facility list. And if you look at it, you can see that there are a few that might be located slightly outside the country. So there might be some problems there already. So um, I don't know if you can see at the very top, the little um, on the very right hand side of the toolbar is where it says squad. Um, that is the tool. So you click on the squad tool and you get this file here that lists all the different anomalies and it lets you pull down these different menus that will give you these different choices. So for site file you have to choose from all the files you have loaded. In this case it's the Kenya file um, and, and you have to choose the right values for longitude, latitude, site name. Um, and then you also load in the admin unit name field. Um, and then you choose run in background. So right here you're running the squad tool. And so to go through, I think it's 5,400-ish sites in Kenya, it takes like a minute and a half. And then um, and it gives you a progress bar while it's running. And then this is what the output looks like. Um, these are the fields with the different anomalies in them.
Um, and here's an example of an anomaly five and anomaly six. You can, of course, click on the map and highlight the, um, whoops, you can click on the map and highlight the um, row in the table or vice versa. You can highlight it in the table and then see where it is on the map, see where the problem um, might be. And you can also export a subset of all of the um, sites that have issues for further exploration. Um, so remember the presence of an anomaly does not automatically indicate an error in the data, um, but it identifies anomalies that could be a problem and need further investigation. So this tool is suitable for initial data quality checks in a large spatial data set and also for routine data quality checks. Um, we worked specifically with Nigeria recently because they put their uh, master facility list online and they needed a way for people in each, they have 37 different states. Um, the country is divided into 37 states. It's the most populous country in Africa. Um, and they needed to first just assess what the scope was of the problems with their master facility list. So we helped them come up with a data quality score um, to find out which, so that was just basically the number of anomalies that showed up for each of these um, states and they could see where the, where the problems were. So then they had a big training session and they trained people from each one of these states how to use this tool and they're now running it on a quarterly basis to see what facilities pop up as having problems. So here's the information about our website, and here's my email address, and I also have cards if you'd like one, um, so you can go online and um, explore the tool. Or like I said, which I didn't put on here, you can search for squad in uh, the QGIS plugin list. That's it. Are there any questions? Yes? Yeah, so it seems like a tool like this can be used for lots of other things that seem like the partial centroids that are way out of the place where they should be. Um, and this could be used by end users of the data who are downloading this dirty data and wanting to clean up before they do their analysis or research. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like, yeah, the main target is the data producers, is that correct? So that when they are... The main, yeah, I mean, I guess the main target is... Um, yeah, any, either anyone who would be using the files or the people who are in charge of producing the files and keeping them updated. So, just so they can get a handle on the potential so, scope so again, of the problems. So, in, um, in um, Nigeria, they, it sounded like you were working with the data producers in each of those states? The, we, the, were, to, to we were working the with the people who were training the data producers mm -hmm. to figure out what was wrong with their data. So we trained them in how to use the tool, and then they went out and had a, um, actually they had people come from all 38 states to one central place and get trained on how to use the, on how to use the tool. So. And while they were doing that, they were assessing their data for the first time. So. <coughs> yes? Do you have, this is more of a question about the data, uh, Availability, I guess, but do you have any resources on where to get data on medical facilities? Is there a, a best resource? The, the online availability varies a lot by country, and there's not very many countries. If you're talking about countries in Africa or Southeast Asia, which are countries that we work with a lot, most of them don't have the data available online at this point. And also, some countries are more willing to share their data than others. So some are working on getting it up online, and some aren't. Any other questions? No? Okay. <laughs>